Welcome back to part two here on Thursday evening with uh, our friend from the Sheffield Star, who uh, is a member of the reporting team on Sheffield Wednesday, Alex Miller. Don Housen holds the record for appearances. <laughs> I thought we, it was about time we changed that. And this is this is your second. You're catching him up. And Tyler Machin, the 19-year-old local league referee who became fourth official in the second half of Sheffield United's FA Cup victory over Fylde recently. Um, that giving you a bit of a taste for what lies ahead? Absolutely. Um, I've always considered it a career option to go into professional referee and to move up the levels, but now I've had that experience, it's given me that little bit of extra drive to try and get there. So you see it as a future career? Potentially, yes, absolutely. Um, I'm at university as well, so I'm studying for aerospace engineering, so potentially a career in that sector as well. Um, obviously, keeping my options open, see refereeing as a potential career as well. Aerospace engineering? Yes. A bit cleverer than us. Oh, no, no, about that. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure about that. It's hard work. <laughs> Prime position to direct traffic on a... Kind of football field. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which university are you at? Uh, Sheffield Hallam University, so just, just across the road. Just across the road? Yeah, yeah. You had no difficulty in finding your way? No, here. no, straight out of the library, no. straight here. So. Strikes me, though, that if you're successful in that degree course, that you could have a very rewarding career in the aerospace in industry. Absolutely. Um, there's a sh shortage of aerospace engineers at the minute, um, so I think companies are tend to pay aerospace engineers quite a lot of money because of the shortage to try and bring more in um, potentially looking at the Royal Air Force as well as a career option yeah. as well so yeah potentially a rewarding career there as well so in some ways wouldn't that be more attractive and more dare I say secure um, potentially um, however obviously being a football fan and wanting to be a professional footballer when I was younger you know a young kid refereeing sort of another way into professional football because obviously I'm never going to become a professional footballer because I'm not that good um, so I see refereeing as a potential way to get back in there same is true of journalists right. <laughs> to if you can't do it write about right it about or it. talk about <laughs> it Exa exactly the yeah. same right but the fact that you have played however badly takes away one of those criticisms where he's never kicked a ball in his life they say of referees sometimes and I'm sure that's never true Actually, um, is it true? A lot of referees have played before. Yeah. Um, but there are some who haven't. Um, there's not a pre-requirement to play before you do your course. Anybody can do the course as long as they're obviously of, of age and meet the um, safeguarding criteria and mm. stuff like that. Um, however, playing does help a lot because you sort of understand the physical side of the game a lot more. Like you can understand the difference between a shoulder barge and a push and mm. stuff like that. So it does help. Playing, absolutely. Whereabouts on the field did you play? I was a goalkeeper actually. For, Were you? Uh, for Wickersley Youth, yeah. There's right another, so. there's another uh, certifiable uh, occupation, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Be, being in goal or being a referee, there's, they're not far removed. No. <laughs> I wouldn't have said, would you, Alex? Yeah, no, you've got to have, yeah. Uh, yeah, a little switch in your head that's a little bit different, isn't it? Yeah. You those jobs, I think. So you're determined to be um, a referee. How, how many years is that going to take you to to, to reach? Football league level, EFL, as they call it now. Uh, potentially 10 years really? to, to be on the line, I would presume. Um, Is that too long? What do you, do you think? It's, I, I think it's too long. It's one of those, it, you know, I suppose if you're good enough. But, you know, it, it'd be like anything, you know. It, it, I don't know about you, Alan, it took me a long time to get to where I'm in my career. So you've got, you've got to go through the stages, I guess, and, and prove yourself. Absolutely. I've, you know, I've been going through the promotion process myself. Um, obviously started off at the bottom because I'm... I've only been doing it five years, so I'm trying to work my way up, but it's just, you know, year after year, it's a process that you have to go through. Mm -hmm. That takes time. I haven't got there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday. VAR, by the way, I've just oh. written that down and ringed it. <laughs> it's all right, you're safe. I'm you're safe, sa you're safe. You don't have to operate with it. If you have to operate with it, you couldn't have commented on it. <laughs> That's the way, the way things work. Um, how much more... Movement because we uh, we've only just started today. Gary Monk's first signing, Manuel Hidalgo, a winger, Argentinian winger, age twenty from uh, Italian team uh, Trieste. Trastina, yeah, yeah. Um, two things: uh, how busy and how big an emphasis on lowering the age of the squad now. Yeah, he, he sort of said that today actually in his press conference. We, the question was asked 
you know, it is a 20 year old wing, of the, you know, the sort of the, the new bit of business that, that Wednesday are going to go after, obviously. There's been years sort of focused on, on maybe experienced championship players and with big price tags. Um, and the, the situation that Wednesday find themselves in, you know, it's, it's not sustainable to do that anymore. So, yeah, I think certainly with Hidalgo, he's. Monk made it very clear today that he's going to start in the under 23s. He's not going to be someone that's, that's thrown straight in the first team. Um, but yeah, they, they, they had him on trial, and, and you know they quite fancy him. I think he's quite technically gifted, and, and really impressed with his his sort of attitude and stuff. He's a, a friend of Fernando Forestieri, so right. there was some sort of link there. Um, but yeah, in, in, t in terms of the weight of business that, that's maybe coming, you know, as I said before, he's very keen to get some attacking players in. The, the importance of that obviously increased by the, this injury to Stephen Fletcher, which is going to be a couple of months at the very least. Um, so yeah, you know, the, I mean, the performances of, of Sam Winnell and particularly Newhue on Saturday, you know, might suggest that it's not, you know, as important as maybe, but I, I think it is, and he's mm. sort of very clear still that he does want to get a, a striker in the door. Bringing one or ideally two strikers in, one of a maybe a Fletcher line leader type. Mm -hmm. I mean, that points to Wickham or yeah, somebody sure. of that ilk, and another different type of striker. Do you think that they will look to do that before they maybe consider offloading a, a striker or two because they've been top heavy there anyway? Yeah, the, you know they've still got five first team strikers. You know, obviously with Fletcher's injury, but five first team strikers in the squad. Um, it remains to be seen. I think if the opportunity comes up to, to get someone in on a loan, and Monk's made very clear that they are operating in that that market only, really, unless, yeah. unless some you know brilliant opportunity comes yeah. up. That's understandable and sensible, I think. Yeah, I like think so. Fact. I think so. And, and you know, there are some good players knocking about. It's very competitive. Yeah. You know, with a lot of the championship clubs having to tighten the belt, so that loan market's become even more competitive. Um, yeah. But there are, you know, there are some good players available. I think. Jordan Rhodes uh, linked with uh, Wigan. Uh, I think it was the Sheffield Stars' understanding that mm. there was some kind of approach from Wigan. I mean, it's not the only club that's been linked with him. Uh, yeah. You would expect there to be some interest, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think so. He's one of those names that I think for, for a club maybe in Wigan's position, you know, and, and Wigan are one of those clubs, there are a few in the Championship that desperately need some goals to, to get out of the situation they're in. So, you know, if you can bring in someone like Jordan Rhodes with the, the weight of goals that he's got across his career, if you can bring him in, you know, it'll be uh, it'll be a big boost. So I'm not surprised that the, the perhaps is interest. Um, yeah. You know, and like I say, on loan, you know... Gary Monk have anything to say on that, or was that re really... Yeah, the question yeah. was asked today, um, you know, and he, he sort of suggested that, that nothing sort of crossed his desk on, on that front. So. Really? Yeah. No, surprised. Because um, really, ultimately, he's, he's, he's got to call the shots, really, I think, on, on, on it outs as well as ins, I, I, I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, um, and, uh, you know, it, it sounds like he certainly did so in the case of, of Thornley and Baker. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll wait to see uh, what happens from here. Um, meantime, we're going to talk VAR uh, and other matters arising in a moment. Just, just one or two other sort of general points to make. Um, to stop Jamie Christian of Abidale Sports Club, uh, he works there for Amiga uh, at Abidale, ringing me and interrupting me during the programme, as he often does. I have to mention that uh, Brian Dean will be my guest uh, we're doing a series of uh, evenings with top sports personalities, mainly football people actually, uh, at the Amiga at Abidale and Brian will be my guest a week tonight. Uh, so that's next Thursday, the 23rd, I think it's the 20th, yeah, 23rd of uh, January. There are still just one or two uh, tickets left. You can purchase those from Amiga at Abidale at Abidale Sports Club and hence uh, there'll be no live show from me here next week. We'll be running uh, a recent repeat but I will be back here in a fortnight's time with among others the new chief executive of Welcome to Yorkshire. He's got a big job on and we'll see how he's going to applying his thinking to South Yorkshire and the football clubs. That's James Mason, a long-standing colleague of mine, a very good guy indeed and uh, hopefully also uh, a representative of Sheffield and Hampshire County FA, uh, not least on the way they're protecting match officials from abuse, sometimes physical violence, and the steps that they're taking to try to attract more referees into the sport. Because it strikes me, um, Tyler, that there's always a bit of a problem there. And were you ever put off or did you ever think cracky there are easier ways of uh, pursuing a hobby than this um 
like I said, there is a problem with the referees getting abuse, um, a lot of verbal abuse, and rare occasions there is physical abuse as well. Um, luckily, I've not experienced any of that myself. Um, but it, it can potentially put people off. There's a shortage of referees nationally. I think it's one in five games go without a referee. So there's a huge recruitment drive to, to uh, recruit referees. Um, and looking at young people my age to obviously push them through the levels. Um, so if anybody does is, is interested in refereeing, you know, it's, it's a good hobby. You get paid, keeps you fit, you stay involved in football. You can always head to the County FA website and book yourself on a course. But in terms of the abuse, um, we have got the tools to deal with it. We've got yellow cards. And this season has seen the introduction of sin bins as yeah. well. So a yellow card sin bin for dissent, which obviously means that player goes off for 10 minutes and calms down before he's allowed back on. Have so, you used it yourself? Yeah, I've used it um, quite a bit. Um, Sunday league level and county senior as well. Um, like I say, it calms the players down and they come on and they tend to behave for the rest of the match. So you found it to be an effective tool? The, yeah. the, the, the sin bin. You know, I've, I've heard polarised opinions on this. I've heard some people say, well, almost as a matter of pride, I haven't used it. In, in other words, my man management is, is good enough. And if, if I use it, I'm kind of showing that I'm not able to manage situations without sending somebody off for, was it 10 minutes, you said? Yeah. Uh, 10 minutes. But isn't that sort of... Uh, letting the side down in the respect of, well, this is introduced for a reason, use yeah. it. Um, yeah, I disagree with what, what that guy says. Um, these tools have been given to us because it's been recognised that it's been a problem. Mm. And yes, I'll try and man manage the problem first. I'll try and talk to the player first, try and calm him down, get the captain involved, etc., etc. However, at the end of the day, there's a limit to how far your tolerance tolerances everybody's got different levels so at the end of the day if they have to be sin bin they have to be sin bin and it mm. just makes your life easier for the next 10 minutes and they obviously come back on calm down which makes the game easier for the rest of the match what do you think Alex for the professional game uh, clearly the FA are trialing it with a, a view I think to mm. to introducing it do you, do you think it would be a good it makes a lot of sense to me I think uh, I'm a big rugby union fan, so right. you know, obviously it's been you know in uh, that level, well, at all levels in, in rugby union for a number of years now, and, and seems to have worked. And obviously, slight differences in, in that rugby union is a bit more stop start, and the balls out of play that a bit more. So maybe ten minutes is, you know, not as uh, influential as maybe it would be in football. But yeah, I, I think for for some of the offences that you know you look at that maybe like an orange card offence, that, you yeah. know, that's the phrase that's used. It, yeah, make a lot of sense for me, and yeah, all for it. Before we uh, go to VAR, just uh, a special uh, mention of a couple of other things. Welcome back to our old friend Ryan Hindley. Now, I mentioned Dom Housen being record appearance holder. I think R Ryan is not far behind him during his uh, previous spell as manager of Hallam FC. He's back there now as joint manager and very good to see. He played brilliant, very attacking, very attractive football during his previous spell. If some of that can rub off again... I'm sure he'd be a good addition for Hallam, but I'm convinced he's only done it really because he wants to come back here at some time <laughs> in the future. And some people are so desperate, I'll have to have him back. <laughs> I'll have to. And also, he does very good impressions. Right. I don't know if you caught his, one of his previous appearances. He does some brilliant impressions. He does Kel Brook, very good that, and Peter Shreves, among other people. He tried to do me, and that was <laughs> poor, very <laughs> poor. Um, we also have a Speedway special planned. Uh, talk sport reporting colleague of mine, Nigel Pearson, who covers uh, football around the Midlands area, often Wolves and West Brom, but that's, actually he's coming up to Huddersfield on Saturday. He's a Speedway aficionado, commentates on big events, and he's very close to the scene where Sheffield Tigers are concerned. So uh, he and I are hoping to set up an evening with Simon Stead, the <coughs> Sheffield uh, Tigers manager, and also with... Nigel Pearson, so that's something to look forward to. Um, I look forward to championship games possibly a bit more than I do Premier League games at the moment, uh, although I do look forward to watching Sheffield United at Bramall Lane. Yep. You know, but at least I go to Hillsborough on Saturday safe in the knowledge um, that I haven't got as a reporter VAR to contend with. What do you think of it? Um, so mainly as a football fan, I'm not the biggest fan of VAR because right. whenever you're celebrating a goal it's always in the back of your mind that um, this could be ruled out for this this and this so it, you've got 
you sort of got to restrain yourself from celebrating, which I think is wrong, because mm. as a fan you should be celebrating. It's, you know, you've scored a goal and stuff like that. So it's like, mm, it feel I, I don't want to say I don't want to say ruining football, but it feels like it's taking something away from the game. Mm. But as an official, I can understand why officials like it because it'd be nice to have something to bail you out if you got a decision wrong. Not just from the referee's personal feelings point of view, but for the good of the game, getting you know a decision, a massive decision wrong, you know teams can feel feel hard done by, and okay. you know managers can lose their jobs and stuff like that in these big games. So it's good that decisions are put right. However, as a fan, it's just very frustrating. Very it's frustrating. Always Is that because mind. it's not being used as it was intended so far, and that it's got a long way to go? And can it be beneficial to the game? further down the line do you think Alex? I think if you, you look at how it's being used in other countries I think it, you know it's it's not popular but it's, <coughs> it's become accepted in, in Germany which was one of the first major leagues to, to take it on um, and there are just little little tweaks and, and things that can be changed you know the referee going off to, to have a look and making the decision himself for a start and you know the, the criticism over the idea that these big decisions are being made at several miles you know 100 miles away or whatever um, so yeah, I, I was always a big advocate for VAR, but uh, you know I think I'm I'm in in the masses when I say it's an absolute mess at the minute. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a shame really. This is this has been the first sort of real look that that the UK public have had of VAR. And the offside one is is the the worst example uh, of where VAR is sucking the life out of the game for me. Um, you know official in a blink of an eye has got to judge offside or onside. What do you think of all these lines being drawn on the screen and these long delays uh, to find that a toe cap is over the, is offside, stuff like that? Well, to start off with, in the letter of the law, if his toe is offside, then technically, yes, he is offside yeah. in terms of letter of the law. However, um, you know, there's, a, there's an argument to how far do we go, do we go millimetres, do we go centimetres, etc. Is the machinery good enough is the technology and that's what i'm going to come to, to now that. is because obviously you've got your different frames can you tell which exact frame is where he's played the ball yeah. which is a big debate at the minute and obviously drawing the lines onto the uh, screen as well are they parallel with the field of play etc etc so it's like is the technology there to make them millimeter decisions that's what that's what i think at the minute because at the end of the day, if he's a millimetre offside, he's a millimetre offside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I take, that's, well, take all that. That's not a problem with VAR, that's a problem with the laws. Exactly, the laws. It's just the way VAR is if, if, if you it. have to draw lines and you look at it and think, I'd have to draw lines, go with the on field, whether it be an offside flag or allowing the goal. Simple. Well, one of the things I said about VAR was it's only there to um, correct clear and obvious decisions. Yeah. Um, like, like, for example, Karima Thierry Henry, when he handballed against Ireland. To me, that's what VAR was for, to yes. eradicate stuff like that. But when you're talking millimetres, to me, that's not clear and obvious. It's so. not in the spirit of uh, the game either, no. and neither is the handball law. What a mess they've made of, of that. I mean, I can understand it if the ball accidentally goes in, or, even if it's accidental, off a hand or an arm, disallow it, it's unsatisfactory. But it's extended to the build-up. For instance, to me, OK, I was delighted Sheffield United won, and it was a moment of high drama. Well. <laughs> you were delighted yep. with the reversal of the West Ham equaliser. But that was against the spirit of football for me. Um, that was a good goal for West Ham, I think. What did you think, Alex, before I bring... Yeah, it's one of the, and, and it, it seems to be happening more and more. It, it happened in the uh, United Wolves game. Manchester United, I should say, in Sheffield. Yes. Um, Manchester United <laughs> Wolves game last night. Um, you know, a decision went for, for my team, Liverpool, a couple of weeks ago as well. Um, it, you know, it, it, I, I think it's the, the way that the handball law is written rather than, you know, VAR. Yeah, absolutely. You know? VAR has got to check it. Yeah, and, you know, and, and like Tyler itself. says, you know, if it's against the law, it's against the law. It's the law that should be looked at. <laughs> it's it perfectly there because um, in football as fans we don't accept goals being scored when a hand has come into play therefore that's why they've changed that law yeah which now includes a build-up as well but that's the the point the yeah. the irritating point that it includes the build-up something accidental well, going too far surely to me in the immediate build-up such as that West Ham goal yeah 
if um, this might sound a bit biased because I'm still a Sheffield United fan, mm -hmm. but to me, he, Egan's heading that ball away if it doesn't strike his arm. He, that ball's been cleared, so I can see why they've used that law to disallow it because, like I says, if if Egan gets his head to that, which he has, and it doesn't hit his arm, it's it's going out of play, and there's right. no way Declan Rice is getting to it and, and crossing it for Snodgrass. Okay, well, that's another that's yeah. another view, uh, and Maybe VAR could view, but... have us arguing. <laughs> All night. Fortunately, do, yeah. you don't have to use it, but one day you will. And by the time you use it, I'm hoping they've perfected it yeah. and we see a lot less of it because then it will be more effective, like you say, for the clear and obvious, obvious. things. Um, we're coming towards the end of the programme, but I'm relying on you now to work out just how much stoppage time we've got. <laughs> we've got three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> three minutes. Actually, that's a minute down on what, what we usually uh, <laughs> usually have, isn't it? Yeah, four, or five minutes yeah. Five, yeah. Yeah. four or five minutes in games. I presume yeah. you'll be at Hillsborough on Saturday. Absolutely, yeah. As I will be. Uh, I'm doubting that you're going to be down at Arsenal. No, no, not at Arsenal this weekend. Um, didn't get a ticket, essentially. Um, plus, yeah. On refereeing duties as well. Whereabouts are you refereeing this weekend? Then? I believe I'm at Drumfield this weekend. I'll Drumfield. Have to check, check my diary. But Drumfield Town. Yeah, Northern Counties. Northern Counties. I'll have to double check whether that's this week or next week. But is it? Well, we've had the Drumfield Town manager here. Uh, we featured them a couple of years ago because they, un it, unusually, even at non-league level, they pay nobody anything. A bit like this show, actually. That none of the players get paid. The manager doesn't get paid. Nobody gets paid. You know. And they all do it for the love of the game. So, John Field, I hope they pay the referee. Yeah, the referees get paid. Make sure of that one. And you'll be the only guy on the field that gets paid <laughs> mm -hmm. in, the, in that game. Well, I, I hope you have a, a good game, an enjoyable game, and I wish you all the very best for your future career, whether it's yes, in aerospace or the IR, IR, RAF, or whether it's uh, in football. And uh, it's really been a pleasure to uh, talk to you and hear about that. Wonderful experience. I just hope that isn't the height of your career <laughs> and you're going to get, get, get back and do more. Is it possible as a referee, just finally on the show, to uh, appreciate what you're seeing in terms of good football on the field? Or are you so switched on to the laws of the game all the time that you can't really be distracted? I'm just enjoying the football Chef United are playing at the minute. Obviously, two promotions in the last few years. Chris Wilder has got us playing brilliant football. It's probably the best I've seen in my yeah. lifetime. Um, I used to look at the referee a lot when I first started refereeing to try and learn on the positioning and stuff like that. But now I've sort of gone back to being a 100% fan. Yeah. I'm just enjoying it. So enjoying even, the, even the though time. it's your hobby but also your future career, you're just watching football, yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah, got a season yeah. ticket. Because I know one or two referees who, who who actually watch the referee, they can't help it. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's good to know that you're just... A, and when you're refereeing yourself out in the middle can you appreciate the game the final point yes of the game or not? yeah yeah absolutely i can understand why players get frustrated and why players might want to argue which again yeah. comes into the man management before you start whacking sin bins out yeah um so yeah i understand how the players feel obviously that comes from playing as well yeah uh, and yeah appreciate the game i've got okay. to you know I enjoy the game that's why i'm involved so fantastic you've been a brilliant guest sheffield wednesday to beat blackburn I'd say so. Blackburn are on a bad run. Let's, let's hope yeah, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with that as well, probably by two goals to one. Uh, and with that 2-1 lead, I don't know about you, Alex, I'm taking the ball into the corner now. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm taking the ball into the corner. There's about 15 seconds <laughs> left. Play the clock now. <laughs> Tyler, thanks ever so thank much. You. Brilliant. Cheers, and thank you. thank you very much indeed to you, Alex. Thank you for watching. It's repeated here at 11pm. And it will be on my YouTube channel as well. I'll see you back here in a fortnight. See you then. Bye-bye.